My name is Vahid Chitza, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Chapman. I'm 23 years old, and I live in Los Angeles. All right. Awesome. So Catherine got some questions for you. Sure. One of the things that I want to talk about is, we know that there's a crisis going on, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are in fear. How do we get rid of our fear? What would be a couple of remedies that we could utilize to just get out of that stagnation, if you want to call it that? That is such a great question. And there's actually a viral post going around talking about how we are all in the same storm, but we're not all necessarily in the same boat. And I really love that um, take and perspective because fear affects us in many different ways. It's a very, it can be a very isolating experience because we, the way that we handle it may be different from the way that someone else handles it. I don't think you can ever fully overcome fear, but I think that there is a lot of benefit as to what fear can teach us from what we want out of life. It can teach us more about ourselves, our deepest insecurities. Personally, for myself going through this pandemic, of course, if you feel like you're in a place where you need to take care of yourself and to take time to your, for yourself to rest and recuperate, you definitely want to allow yourself that time. But I think there are three very quick tips I would love to share with you for how I have been able to feel like I am taking more control of the situation rather than having the pandemic affect me. I want to always remain in a sense of um, self-empowerment and like the feeling of I got this, especially when trying to continue to pursue and um, maintain that hunger for desire. So the first quick tip I have for you is to take control of your morning and bedtime routines. And this is, seems like it's you know not that big of a deal, but it is such a small tip that can actually lead to so many breakthroughs for you in your everyday life. So I have my notes here as I was thinking about what to say. You wanna keep it very simple. So you can start with a small goal such as, I would like to be in bed at this time and I would like to wake up at this time. What I do personally is I actually set an alarm about an hour before I wanna to go to bed. Um, and this helps me, especially if I've gone off on a tangent, I've been watching the news too long, uh, you know, I'm kind of out of it. It helps me to recalibrate myself and I know that, okay, I need to get in the bathroom, start getting ready to, to go to bed. And I find that taking control of my morning and bedtime routines has reinstilled a sense of control in my overall life. And while I can deal with the pandemic that is going on in my own way, I'm not feeling like it's taking control over my life. So that is the first tip. Do you have time for a few more tips? Go ahead, I'm, I'm listening to the second one. Okay, uh, the second tip I have for you is to do one thing a day that is important to you, but that is for you. So what I mean by this very important distinction is this one thing that you do a day, you don't want it necessarily to be for work or even for another person, although it's great when we help people. But this particular tip I have for you is about the relationship with you and yourself and investing in yourself. So for me, that activity, currently I'm quarantined with my family and my activity that I do for myself every day is I meditate before I get out of bed in the morning. And this allows me to recalibrate and assess where I am that morning before I go out and have my cup of coffee or interact with my family. I really think you need to pay yourself first. And they say that money is the currency of the world, but it's really not, it's your energy. And you must give your energy to yourself first before you can help others. So my second tip is to do one thing a day that is important to you, but that is for you as well. And the last tip, and probably the most important tip, is to be kind to yourself. I've been reconnecting a lot lately with some colleagues, and we all have this similar sentiment about how we feel like we should be more productive than we're actually being, and kind of getting really hard on ourselves. And you have to be kind to yourself, because if you can accept the fact that you are in control of your career success and accomplishing your goals, then you have to be on your own team and you have to, you cannot have two conflicting parts. You both have to, both parts of yourself have to work together. So those are my three tips for you. All right. Now I'm starting my questions. You, that was like a whole entire book. Are you writing a book? Oh. Is that coming out soon? Or is there a course that's coming out? I have numerous 
things that are currently in the works, but I never like to announce them until I get to a certain point where I feel like they're ready. Cool, got it. So here's my question for morning routine. Okay. When you have a morning routine or bedtime routine, what if life throws you a curveball? How do you not feel guilty for you not sticking to your plan? And how do you adjust for the next day? Because I feel like sometimes for entrepreneurs and business owners, it's, I'm constantly putting out fires. So if that fire happens at like, let's say 9 p.m. and it takes me an hour to put it out, uh -huh. so now everything's pushed back for it. So how do I, what, what is the remedy there? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up because I think when we fall off track a little bit, again, we get very, very hard on ourselves. And I think that this is actually ties to a larger problem that is a huge threat facing young people and young entrepreneurs. And I believe that to be the influence that instant gratification has had on us. So for example, when you think of instant gratification, I know you think probably in terms of how instant gratification serves us and how we get our packages really quickly and and I'm not saying that having your needs met quickly is necessarily a bad thing. But what I realized, everyone, was that the expecting the same fast results from others, I was also expecting those fast results for myself. And I was encountering mental barriers such as overthinking and perfectionism and feeling like I had to have my product be so perfect before I gave it out to the world. And in doing that, I was constantly fixating on my goals and desired outcomes, and I never created a structure or a system for how to get to those goals and how to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And I realized that this was actually a huge detriment to myself. So when you create a system to achieve those goals, when you redirect your focus away from the goals and the desired outcome and actually on the process, you learn to love the process and it makes it so much more manageable and easier for you to deal with those types of circumstances when things come along your way and they kind of throw you off balance because you know that your intent is you are making progress every single day and that is playing the long game and playing the long game will have will get you to those results that you are searching for is it okay to put something out that is not perfect for the sake of just putting it out? <laughs> or can you just, you know, make make corrections and adjustments and fine tune it as you go along? Because that is a big um, hurdle that a lot of entrepreneurs go through that they worry about what other people are going to judge them. Or, now, I'm not saying put up, put garbage out there where it doesn't work at all. You know, you, you have to have the minimum requirement met. You have to have that. But I could totally see that. And and I think like more like attorneys, CPAs, engineers, people that are like more stronger suit on the logical side, they think like that and they process it like that. Versus people that are just like, let's just get it. I don't think either one is right. I think it needs right. to have like a, a hybrid in between. That's why I think like sometimes when you become partner or your spouse or your loved one or the person that you interact a lot with should be that opposite side where like, you know, somebody says, let's launch it. And the other person says, no, let's just fine tune it. So it's just this, this, this battle that you guys go together meets it in halfway that makes it a hybrid. I don't know. I, I don't know where the question was in there. I'm like, how do we, how do we meet yeah. halfway? Well, I think that is so relevant to today and everything that we've already discussed with this idea that we need to be perfect before we go out in the world. And truth is, everyone that we look up to today, everyone that you have mentioned on your page from Napoleon Hill to people from way back when, they all started from nothing in many cases. They all started somewhere. Everyone started somewhere. Many started from nothing. And you cannot be afraid to look like a fool, which is something that in the entertainment industry, I mean, I experience that all the time. I experience rejection left and right and people telling me no 99 times a day, but it just takes that one person to say, yes, I would like to give you a chance. And in moments when you don't have that one person saying that, you have to 
develop again that team and when i say team i mean your internal team with both sides of yourself working together so when the day comes when nobody is there patting you on the back or giving you a chance you have built up such a strong system inside of yourself that you don't necessarily need that because you know that you are living your purpose you are living your truth and they're going to see it one day so you need to start somewhere and you need to just get it out there and allow the people, like even today, this is my first time doing this sort of interview, this live, I've never done this before. You need to allow people to give you that feedback and say, hey, I really like what you said, or you know, I, that didn't really resonate with me. And using those feedbacks in ways that, you know, it's really hard not to take it personally, I have to say, but some of your greatest achievements can actually come from things like rejection or criticism because you learn how to better maneuver in your field or industry that you are entering in. I mean, you can criticize someone, but you could do it in the correct manner also too. Mm -hmm. So if you really truly care about the person, the way you speak and the way you kind of want to let them know that maybe this other way of doing things could work. I mean, there's a lot of different ways of explaining. Some people, like I feel like when we watch, I, I watch a lot of YouTube channel videos and I see someone like giving it thumbs up and someone like disliking it. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that dislike didn't do anything. Like if you want to give positive feedback, which could be something that, they need to correct or adjust. That could go in the comment section. You could say, hey, by the way, I love your video. Thanks for putting this out. What do you think of this idea? That to me is like so valuable that the person receiving that feedback, they could go back and say, okay, let's look at this. One of our audience or somebody on this planet had this idea. Can we add this? Can we upgrade? Can Does it have valid points that we did not look at? And I think that is is missing in our society where we're like, I didn't like that. Well, I didn't necessarily do it for you to like it. I didn't put out the content for you to just like it. It was for a different purpose. Now, if you didn't like it, you gotta be more specific. Tell me what did you not like about it? What was it? How was it? It's none of your business. You need to let them just have their own opinion. But anyway, it, it, it's, it's just something that I thought. Now I want to ask another question. Sure. Go why, ahead. Leave, why, why leave law school? Why did I leave law school? Right. I never started law school. No, I'm just kidding. I did a law program where I received my certification from a dispute resolution program at a law school that was attached to my undergrad program. I originally planned and I thought, you know, law school seems to fit the trajectory of my path. And I certainly do plan at some point to resume and go back to law or start law school. But I had numerous career experiences in between undergrad up to this point, And they were very life changing in the sense that I, they kind of forced me and some very hard lessons to come into security with who I am and what I want from a career and how I want to express myself and right now the creative world. And I think it was, it's a very risky decision, right? And it's a very hard decision. And I have so many colleagues that are currently in law school and they text me all the time. I have no idea why the heck I even paid all my money to go get a law degree. I, I'm really not passionate about this. I hate you know, what I'm learning about, I want to go do this. But I think what prevents a lot of young people, especially from starting, is that they are so afraid of failing and being risky. And this is the time when you're young to pursue your passions and to take all the risks in the world. And just know that you're a lot more supported than you think you are. Like even right now, I see some people that I know that maybe I haven't chatted with in a while and they, they are showing me lots of uh, support in doing this live. So you have a lot of people looking at you that maybe don't ever say anything to you or they kind of watch you in silence, but you can be a real inspiration to those around you. And 
You can never go wrong following your passion, pursuing your dreams. And like we said earlier, it truly is all about the process. And those that want to just jump straight to the top, I mean, everyone wants to be at the top, don't we all, right? But if your focus is on the process to get there, you will grow so much as a person. You will realize what's important in your life. You realize your self-worth. You stay away from toxic relationships, things that no longer serve you. You cut addiction and you know all this stuff out of your life. So it's really phenomenal. And it can be a very lonely journey, but you're not the only one going through it. And there's a huge community like this page that provides you know, lots of chances for you to connect with people. So I definitely encourage you to always follow your passion. And no one ever has many supporters in the beginning. Everyone gets the supporter when they are already famous or they've won a Nobel Peace Prize. Those people likely, aside from their family and close friends, they didn't have a huge following or support system when they were starting out. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, especially on social media platforms such as Instagram. You always really only see people's finished product, if you will. You see them polished and really, you know, this is what I've been working my whole life for. Here you go. But you never see the process that it took them to get there. And just have faith in that and know that you are worthy and you can achieve anything you want. I agree with that 100%. I mean, I, my wife has got a lot of, uh, she went to Pepperdine. She finished Pepperdine. And she is an active bar member. So, I mean, I would have never thought I would have married an attorney. Not in a million years, but that was a different... Uh, I was actually reading the book Thinking Go Rich in Barnes & Noble when I met my wife. Wow. So that was kind of a cool thing. But, uh, but she has the same thing. She does have a lot of uh, individuals around her that are attorneys, but they could be doing something else that they love. Now, they got the law degree to fall back on, which is kind of cool. It's all right. If you have the opportunity, the money, the IQ, definitely go do it. And I always, you know, uh, joke about that in our household. And I, I tell them, you know, I tell my wife, I hope that our daughter gets your IQ and my good looks. So that way, you know, it, it will just bad or my business, you know, stuff. But my wife might disagree with the business side a little bit. But the point is that if you can think it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. And don't don't silence that inner voice. Be true to it and just put it out there and just trust it that the right people are going to come around and the right circumstances are going to come about, about that will get you there. So you kind of build your business when no one is watching. Exactly. You build yourself when no one is watching. Exactly. And just what came to mind, I mean, it's so exciting too to – take a more riskier path and to follow your passion because you don't know if you, how it's going to go. You don't know where, where you will end up. And it's so fun and it just makes life all that much worthwhile. And with what you just said about building your business in silence, one, the, the, because I'm so young, the one business that I have built, I built it in silence. And that was um, as I pursue the entertainment industry and going out to auditions and things like that, I soon realized that I needed a side hustle. And um, this hustle that I started out doing ended up becoming a business where I work as a commercial artist and I'm able to supplement my income. I'm able to support myself on my journey to whatever I want to become. It's so fun. I mean, it's scary when you start, don't get me wrong. But once you kind of, you kind of get some small affirmations along the way you know, certain people cheering you on or the per random person in the grocery store that's like, wow, that's a great idea. And of course, you get the naysayers as well. But if anything, they just reaffirm that, you know, I'm doing this. So just watch us do it, you know. But um, it's so fun. And yeah, it's, it's scary too, but it's all worthwhile. And, you know, you owe it to yourself. So definitely. And I know that you promised you were going to get your mom uh, on our show. She's got a lot of background <laughs> that might be interesting. Uh, I so will definitely, do my best. <laughs> well, just send her, my, send me her Instagram account, and I reach out to her. And I won't tell her that you send that to me. So I just go anonymous. How's that? Uh, but right. definitely, no. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning, um, and and sharing. Hopefully, we'll get to do a lot more because there were some topics that we hit up that I don't think one twenty-minute video is going to do 
um, a complete justice on it. So we're definitely going to do more. And one topic that I think we need to discover more for a lot of the younger entrepreneur is that how can you say no to other people that you love? How do you say to your parents that no, this is what you guys want me to do, but this is in reality what I want to do? So we'll talk about that. There's a couple of uh, good questions out there that we could do. Hopefully, it'll help a few people kind of navigate throughout the life. But I think we're all going to turn out to be okay. So I don't want to panic. It's going to be fine. Yes, we're all in this together. And if anything came to your guys's mind while watching this, feel free to. DM my elite mastermind or myself directly and we will do our best to address your questions in our next live session. Done deal. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.